Hello everyone. I hope you are doing good and staying safe. Welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. In today's session, we are going to learn about Web SQL. Web SQL is a database technology which allows user to store data in browser using SQL queries. Now, if you are someone who have already worked on SQL, Web SQL concept will be a piece of cake for you. More on that soon. But before we get started, if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest technologies. And hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is Web SQL, and then we'll understand why we use Web SQL, and then we'll go through different methods used in Web SQL. And next, we'll understand some insert and read operations performed in Web SQL using syntaxes. And finally, we look at the Various queries, its syntax and execution using examples. So, without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic. So, what is Web SQL? Web Storage API offers a really nice way to store key-value pair data information within the user browser itself without any hassle and in a convenient way. But what if you need to store complex relational data and perform simple or complex queries on this data? Well, Web Storage does not allow this, but Web SQL database does. Basically, Web SQL Database is a web browser API specification for storing and managing data in databases that can be queried using a variant of SQL. That means, just like any other SQL databases, Web SQL also provides a way to store the data in the database that can be queried using various SQL statements. Now, the W3C or the World Wide Web Consortium stopped supporting the usage of Web SQL Database specification. However, it is still implemented and supported by some browsers like Google Chrome, Android, and some mobile versions of Safari and Apple iOS as well. Now, although Web SQL tends to be labeled as an HTML5 feature, Web SQL database is not exactly a part of the HTML5 specification, but it is a part of a separate suite of specifications which introduces a set of APIs to manipulate client-side databases in using SQL. Now, client side means that the processing takes place on the user's computer. It requires browsers to run the scripts on the client machine without involving any processing on the server. Now, server side means the processing takes place on a web server, and this processing is vital and important to execute the task required by the user on the web. Now, since the client side script is executed on the client's computer, it is visible onto the client. And on the other hand, the server-side script is executed in the server; hence, it is not visible to the users. So, Web SQL is kind of risky to use because it stores the data at the client side and not on the server side. So, if the user or someone outside your own browser who has the HTML script or the uh, syntax ready of the Web SQL that you are creating, he can have the access and he can manage the uh, browser or the API as well. So that is why Web SQL helps developers to perform database operations on client side, like creating databases, opening transactions, creating tables, inserting values to tables, deleting and reading data from it. The core methods in Web SQL. Now, core methods are an important concept of Web SQL because they are used to perform CRUD operations like create, update, delete, and read operations on the database. Now, in Web SQL, there are mainly three core methods. They are open database, transaction, and finally, we have execute SQL. Firstly, open database. Now, open database it creates a database object using the existing database, or it can also create a new one. Next, we have transaction. This method is used to control a transaction and can perform commit or rollback depending on the situation. And finally, execute SQL. It is used basically used to execute read and write operations to perform the result of the query. That means it is used to execute uh, the actual SQL query that we are performing on the Web SQL. So let us now discuss about them in detail. Creating and opening database in Web SQL. As you all know, to work with SQL queries, you must first create a database. So the first step we are going to follow is creating a database. Now, in order to start communication with the database, you have to use the open database method, which will basically create a database object. Now, if you try to uh, open a database that doesn't exist, 
the system will automatically create a database for you and eventually a database object will be created for that and open the database we have to use the following syntax as var db obj db obj is basically the object that i have taken to our database is equals to open database is the method and inside the parenthesis we have to mention first the database name version number text description size and creation callback so let me just uh, explain about these terms so by using this open database function we can basically create a database in web sql and open the database and these are basically the five parameters that are accepted by the open database function the first one is database name this argument provides the name of the database which is mandatory to be provided otherwise you will get an error next we have the version number the version number is also required now some database may be in version 1.0 or some may be in 2.0 so if you know the version number of the database then only you can open the uh, database that you are working on next we have the text description this argument describes the database and provides information about the database now you can provide any uh, any sort of description to your uh, database that you are working on next we have the size of the database this argument decides the size of the database basically uh, which is generally in mb and finally we have a creation callback now if the database does not exist and yet it is being created this callback will be invoked so it is optional and is not needed for the database to be created and uh, eventually we can apply if you want so in this way you can successfully create and open a database so let me just take an example here i have taken a uh, db as my uh, database object here open database and the name of the database is library and the version is 1.0 and the text description i have given is my library and the size i have taken is 5 into 1024 into 1024 which is basically uh, 5 mb now the size is basically from uh, 1 mb to 5 mb max so we have to take in that range itself Next let us discuss about how we create transaction and use execute sql method now once the database is created and open we want to create a new table to store and manage our data now any sql operation like creating a table or inserting data into a table has to happen in a transaction a transaction is basically a set of operations in web sql now transaction provides uh, two features namely rollback and commit if a transaction fails at any point in time or a query has an error then it will be rolled back including all the queries that you have inserted and if all the queries are successfully executed then the transaction will be committed now the syntax for for creating a transaction is basically db which is a database object dot transaction which is the keyword or the method now inside the uh, parenthesis we will write a function tx tx is basically the object of the transaction now since we have created our database object db and using the open database method we can perform a transaction here using the database method transaction now the transaction basically can take up to three arguments the first one is transaction callback the second one is error callback and the last one is success callback now these arguments are optional and uh, so here i'm just using the transaction itself now in the transaction callback i have an attribute tx that as we've discussed earlier which is a transaction object now i'll use the execute uh, sql method of this object to create a new table that is author now i'm using this execute sql method to create a table author which has id first name last name as different columns now just like in uh, sql we provide a primary key to one of the column which uniquely identifies each and record similarly we provide with the keyword unique to identify the records uniquely in this so for that i am taking id as our unique column and once is done to execute this query in web sql we will use the method execute sql as usual so let us now discuss how to insert a new record in our table to our database so now that you have a database uh, that is library and have created a table that is authors earlier will now insert the uh, records into our table now for that i'll be using the execute sql method again on the transaction instance so the open database remains the same now additionally i'll just take the transaction method here following that i'm using a function t so the query would be t.execute sql and similar to that of uh, what we write in our sql statement we use the same insert command here as well and the syntax is insert into authors first name last name 
and values I'm taking as James Priest. Now consider the below example which is same. Uh, I'm just inserting some more values into our table. For that I'm using another execute SQL method using the TX function which is an attribute to our method that we have used in our function. So TX dot execute SQL insert into author. Now I'm taking another attribute or say I'm adding another column ID which is unique. So first name and last name values as I'm taking ID as two Rohan Nanda. Similarly, I'm taking another record that is three uh, Kiran and Kumar. So in this way, you can use the insert statement to add new records into our table in WebSQL. So now that we have inserted some values into our table, we need to read the data that we have inserted into our table, right? So to do that, we need to create another new transaction and another execute SQL command should be implemented here. So now that we know how to add the data into our databases, now you have to read and display those records back to the user in their browser. And for that, we need to create a simple select statement to read all values from the author's table here. Now when execute SQL is called this time, a callback method is passed that accepts a transaction object and the result set containing the rows that we have uh, inserted into our table will be returned in our SQL statement. Now you can see the callback method that I have used is display result, which I am again putting it in the select statement as well. Now as the display result method iterates to this rows, it formats the person's name in the list and adds it to an unordered list with the uh, ID as well. So in this way we can execute and finally we can see the output of our data. So let me just take an example here. So I'll jump to notepad and uh, I'll show you a script on uh, the web SQL that I've already created. So this is how the uh, script or the whole syntax of the queries that are performed in web SQL uh, will look like. Now, as I've discussed earlier, this is somewhat kind of based on HTML. So I'm not going into detail about this. If you want to learn more about SQL, we have a dedicated playlist on our channel where we've discussed about HTML and JavaScript concepts in detail. So make sure you check that out. So to keep it simple, the first part, this is basically the header part and we have the body and inside the body, we basically write our SQL uh, query here. Now, first of all, I've created a variable. I've called a variable DB OBJ, which is the database object in which I'm calling the open database method. So every time this open database method is called a reference of this database will be sent to this database object, which is DB OBJ. And if I want to perform any further operations on this database, I'll use the same object only instead of creating a new one every time. So I've created a database here as my database with version as 1.0 and I've kept the text description as my first web SQL example. You can uh, write description of your own choice. Uh, database size, I'm giving it as 2 MB, which should be in the format as 2 into 1024 into 1024. And I'm writing the query for opening the database that is the DB OBJ, which is our database object, open database method. And inside that, I'm calling all these variables inside the body. Now I'm using the execute SQL uh, command here inside the function TX. And this method performs a very important role in web SQL database. This method is basically used to execute read and write statements. And it provides a callback method to process the result of any query. So I've created a table here, employee table, and I've created column as ID, name, and their location. Now I'm using a function insert, which will insert all the values into our uh, table columns, that is ID, name, and location. And finally, I'm using the uh, callback method here to read the uh, data that we have created in our tables using the select operator, that is select star from employee table. And I'm using the uh, callback function here as well. So that is it. Now this is all not related. This is come pure basically on HTML, which is basically I've created form which will take the input from the user and I've created different tabs for ID, name, location. And I also created an insert button so that the user will uh, insert the data into the values. And again, this is completely based on HTML guys. So you might need a reference of uh, HTML first to understand this. So I would recommend you to first check the HTML uh, videos on tags, attributes and all so that it will be clear. 
So let me just execute this statement now and uh, let us see the output. So we have to save the file in the HTML format. So um, let me just open the file. So as you can see, our file has been created and let us open this. So as you can see, it will display ID, name, location and, in, and it will ask me to insert values into it. So let me just uh, insert values. I've already taken one value. So let me just take another here. I'm taking ID as two, name as let's say Rahul, location Mumbai. So click on the insert button. It will insert the values into our table. Now similarly, you can add a number of values as per your choice. Let us take another uh, example here. ID as three, name Kiran and location as Chennai. So in this way, we can add values into our table. It will keep on adding every time you insert a new value into these three uh, columns that is ID, name and location. So that was all about WebSQL guys. I hope you understood the concepts that were covered in today's tutorial. Thank you for watching the video guys. I hope you found this tutorial informative and useful. If you have any further queries regarding any of the topics covered in today's session, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and a team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, stay safe and keep coding.